Um, but today I wanted to talk to you, I know we've talked some about uh, self-sabotage and emotional eating and Pavlovian eating and those kind of things. And you guys have said that those are really popular topics. You really like hearing about that. So today I thought I'd touch on um, the unconscious emotional relationship we have with food, kind of the underlying relationship. Um, and obviously this is really personal to each individual. So it's something that is um, much easier to address one-on-one -on -one with clients than it is. But today I wanted to give you just some general ideas about why why is food such an emotional thing for us? It's an emotional trigger, absolutely. It, it really is. And when, um, when we talk to people about changing their diets, even when they want to change their diets, like they actively want to, um, the emotional angst that they feel about it is, is, is challenging. And in some cases, anger. Yes. You know, I mean, we've had some, some pretty unfriendly things said to us yeah. when we talked about foods that, that, you know, like science shows bacon is horrific for you. People will defend bacon. They'll go down with the um, go down with the ship on bacon. Yeah, it's just, they'll take it to their grave. Yeah, literally. Literally, yeah. Um, but it, so I wanted to share kind of the science, the science, what I know as a psychologist, things that I've learned, and um, kind of make some of that unconscious thought conscious for you because it may not this this you know 15 minutes of me talking about it probably isn't going to change your emotional relationship with food, mm -hmm. but it may make you more aware. Um, to kind of notice it because the whole point of it being unconscious is you don't notice, don't notice it. it And so one thing that we say in the world of psychology is if you can make the unconscious conscious it gives you the opportunity to At least notice it and start deciding if you want to change it So that's kind of what I want to try and do for you today is give you the opportunity to start to notice it so the, the first thing that you kind of have to think about is where does your idea about what's good for you and what's bad for you and what's right and what's wrong and all of those kind of unconscious things come from where where are they built and they're built from whoever raised you right so when you're born you don't come into the world with any preconceived notions about food or anything else but you do come with a strong emotional bond to your parent figure whoever that person is and that person does no wrong i can tell you as a child, my father was perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously as an adult, I look at a lot of the things that he did and I'm like, oh my, what a disaster. But as, as a child, even into grade school, he was perfect. He did no wrong. What he said was absolutely the truth. Yeah. The truth. That yeah. was just it. And so when you have that kind of deep emotional, in your neurons attachment to someone, your parent, whatever, whoever that is that raised you, and that person feeds you, which is literally, you are, they are responsible for you, life and death, whether mm -hmm. you're going to um, flourish or not, and they feed you food, that food becomes attached to that feeling, that emotional, they're perfect, everything they do is perfect, um, and even though your logical brain as you mature uh, realizes that's not true, way deep in, in your unconscious brain, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you attach the, what they fed me is perfect to that food, then as an adult, even though logically, your logical brain is like, well, obviously they weren't perfect, you're, you still have the unconscious belief that it is. And we all know, like most parents are just happy their kids are alive. Right. Like they're like, I fed you today, all right. right. You, you're not, you didn't like break anything, fabulous. But that's not the way we, we feel about them. And so think about the things that your parents fed you. You know, as a kid, how do you feel about those foods now? Mm -hmm. Like, there are some things, and I, I wrote about this in, in the book. Uh, I, I just finished, I finished the first draft of the book yesterday. So, <laughs> yay! Um, I wrote about it some in the book, but there are some recipes, family recipes for, for me that have deep emotional meaning. There's one breakfast casserole that my one aunt, and uh, Bridget, if you're on here, I know your mom, absolutely, Aunt Gail, made the most amazing breakfast casserole. And it has bread and eggs and cheese and sausage. And I have an emotional attachment to that. And I can, I can smell it. Like when I think about that, I can smell it. My logical brain is like, do not put that in your body. That is horrible, like that is not food. What is wrong with you? And so I had to kind of be able to separate that and say, I can feel 
the love and the and the caring and all of that stuff that that, that casserole holds for me and not have to choose to eat it. Mm -hmm. But creating that separation is not easy. Mm -hmm. And for me, there's two things that come to mind when I think about it. Oh, thank and, you, Charlene. <laughs> oh, yes, excellent. Uh, and, and one is being Italian, growing up in an Italian household, family gathers, pasta, cheeses, mm -hmm. you know, um, meats, you know, uh, cold cuts, uh, like the pepperonis and the salamis yeah. and the prosciutto and all that the stuff. Italian. You know, all that Italian stuff that I know most of that food is just horrific for you, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and then stuffed peppers. My mom makes a mean stuffed pepper. She does. Um, you know, and it's got, mostly it's got peppers and it's got rice, which is fine. Before she uses white rice, which I prefer she didn't, but that's fine. But then she also throws in the chopped meat and the oils and all the other the stuff. Chicken broth. And, yeah, yeah, and I mean, I mean... Yeah, it's a sad day when I stopped eating that, really. I mean, well, because emotionally it's yeah, sad, right? Absolutely. Valerie took us walking the dog. Hey, we like that. All That's right, good. Nice. And good morning, Deborah. It's good to see you, too. Oh, she has a long comment. Let me see. Having a good morning. We are. Thank you. She's doing well. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry you're not feeling well. Hope you, uh, you get better. And thank you for sharing our video. Thank you, yes, absolutely. But so that, that's what I, I guess I'm encouraging you to consider is if you think about the foods from your childhood that have that just really deep emotional, like too deep to even attach words to it, emotional feeling to it, can you separate them? Can you feel that emotion and the love and the attachment that you have to the people who fed you that food and separate it from the food itself, which is obviously Probably not healthy. I'm not, right. I'm not seeing most people feeling emotionally attached to Brussels sprouts. Like right. that's not really a thing that we're that I we mean, see. Just as a case in point, you know, I'm sure somebody's grown up with their mother or, or father or whoever made chicken soup, and yeah. we just talked about chicken broth last night in our uh, live Q and A for our members, and how it's just not a health food, you know, and how um, there there is no real science about it, and, and it's a myth that there, that you. you eat sick chicken soup when you have a cold or something like that. That's a wise There is deal. no benefit to that. Yeah. And you're, you're better off. Vegetable eating. broth is better for Vegetable you. Vegetable broth is better. Vegetables yep. in general are better for curing what ails you. So mm -hmm. Laura's saying that she ate TV dinners that had the cute cartoon characters on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no emotional attachment to Brussels sprouts, right? Yeah, nobody does. You no, know neither do I. It's not a thing. <laughs> we, get, we get emotionally attached to the food that our body says um, is, gonna, is going to help us like just overcome the next like winter Siberian winter. So the fat, the sugar, the salt, and, and, and that's, you know, 2.5 million years of evolution. Like that, that's not shocking that right. those are the foods that we get attached to. And so you have to try and figure out how do you separate that emotional yeah. attachment. And, and we've talked about this before, um, and this goes a little bit off of emotional attachment, but like the, the salt, the sugar and fat, I mean, to me, it comes back from, and you see it in movies and everything else, like it was so scarce back, you know, two, thousand, two million years ago, whatever, that it was a, you know, it was like when a sport. When you found it, you yeah, made it. Was like, it was yeah. like finding gold, you know? Yeah. And so, but it was a rarity. And, and the things that used to be rare and we had occasionally become everyday consumption today. Right. And that's, that's you know, that's where the problems happen. Well, and unfortunately... Um, we are still designed to eat like we're on the edge of starvation. Like we have to figure out a way to just make it long enough to be able to procreate and pass on our genes. And in reality, we actually live in an obesity epidemic where there's just too much all of the time. Right. And so the, the challenge becomes, you know, and there's another dish that my, uh, my great grandmother used to make. And I don't know where she learned this because obviously tater tots weren't around when my <laughs> great grandmother was first cooking. <laughs> But she made this casserole that had tater tots and cream of mushroom soup and cheese and I think there was ham, I think, in it. I'm not exactly sure. And that was like something she brought all the time. Yeah. And again, another food that I'm like emotionally, it's like, oh yeah, that that feels That's good, good for eats, me. Yeah. And so we have to look, we have to figure out how do we how do we separate the feels good to from the this is I should be eating. What's, Give it, give it time. Yeah, I mean, we've also uh, have yeah. got some attachments to some healthy foods now too, and that's what happens when yeah. you switch over. A, a good friend of mine actually, I, I, I told her I, I make some food for her. She has a, a family situation going on, and I know that she eats plant-based, but her family doesn't, and so I told her, I said, why don't you let me make you a meal? And she said, you know what I want? And I said, what do you want? She said, I want your sweet potato lasagna. And I'm like, okay, I will make you sweet potato lasagna, but that is fun 
for me to see someone who craves a healthy food. Right. And so, you know, is that the same as an emotional attachment? Probably not. But sweet potato lasagna is a pretty good comfort food. Yes. So um, the, the unconscious piece of the attachment is where did it come from? So what did your parents feed you? What, you know, if you, if you were given food when you were sad, like what was that what you know in our family i grew you guys know i grew up on a beef ranch and so injuries happen they just did and so often that we actually had a rule that if you had to go to the hospital and get stitches and you didn't cry you got a scoop of ice cream for every stitch you got that was the rule so if some of the people in her family walked around with gallons of ice cream <laughs> gallons <laughs> I actually counted it up one time, and I think just for getting stitches, I've probably eaten two and a half gallons of ice cream because <laughs> I've had a few stitches in my life. Mm. But so for me, ice cream has this kind of if I'm brave and I do something great, then the reward is ice cream. And obviously, I'm not going to eat ice cream anymore, mm -hmm. but I can still feel the emotional reward of, of eating ice cream I, when I succeed. I find it interesting, and just get slightly off topic here. Uh oh, um, off we go. Is, is you know, you're whole food plant-based and I'm whole food plant-based. And I don't have a history of, of a beef ranch or all that. But she not only has a history of a beef ranch, she has a history of a dairy farm as well. Um, the dairy so, farm was literally just down the road. Well, and you used to, your father used to own a dairy farm for whatever short period of time period it was. Time, yeah. He still did. So, and we I mean, drank 14 gallons of milk So a week. talk about a conversion, you know, <laughs> of, of going from, you know, anything cow is grouped for you to everything cow is stay away from. It's, yeah. It's pretty amazing to me. Yeah. Well, if, you know, yeah. but part of that is, is I do have the kind of brain that can say, okay, I get that this is, you know, there's an emotional thing and then there's the logic and I have been able to separate that. And part of that is my education. And, um, you know, part of that is just because I am that way, but it's no worries. I adore broccoli. Broccoli and fresh spinach are great. Get your sulforaphane yeah, in. Certainly just fresh spinach is an everyday consumption for us. Yeah, that you know, kale. We buy organic spinach and kale. More so, I think, kale in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, My kale plant is still alive. I covered it with a bucket to try yeah, and protect it. Yeah, it got cold. But it's amazing. I mean, it's gone through a, a one snowstorm already and mm -hmm. it's still, mm -hmm. you know, green. So So I would, I would encourage you to start making that unconscious conscious. What are the foods that have that emotional trigger for you? Um, and, and it's easier, I've said this before, but I'll say it again because it's relevant here. It's easier to recognize that emotional trigger and kind of just go, oh yeah, that's an emotional trigger. That has nothing to do with the food I need to eat if your body's getting the nutrients you need. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting enough nutrients, what can end up happening is you end up craving food because your body's like, I'm not getting enough nutrients. Yeah. And then of course you're gonna go for the food that are unconsciously your comfort safe places to yeah, eat. And you start making comments like, I gotta listen to my body. My body says I need deep fried shrimp. <laughs> you know, your body will never say it needs deep fried no, shrimp. No, no, your Take body is never it. gonna need deep fried yes, shrimp. Yes. So she hates mushrooms, I just can't do it. Well then don't eat mushrooms. Yeah, They're that's, good that's for unfortunate. You. They are rare, just so awesome for Cook, you. Cooked, 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 yeah, never raw. I mean we we ate them raw before, but we learned recently that eat them cooked. You want to cook. Yeah, eat yeah. them cooked. But yeah, mushrooms are great, but if you can't eat them, you can't mm. eat them. That's the way it goes. But yeah, that that's the I guess that's the point I wanted to make today is can you recognize first recognize the emotion because that's the hard part it's unconscious so you have to recognize the emotion and then can you separate the emotion from the food i think that that's that's where your challenge is going to come and it's going to be easier if your body's already getting the nutrients it needs because then the emotions can happen and you can feel them and you can be like oh yeah that was awesome and you don't have to repeat it in an unconscious way because your your, your body's craving your cells are craving nutrients because you have the nutrients you exactly. need so did you have anything you wanted to add about unconscious emotional connections to food? Nope, we're good. I think yeah. we said all there is to say All right, I'm sure there's tons more I could say. Oh, yeah, like I said a... at the beginning, it's a very personal thing. This is a journey I um, often go on with individual clients to kind of um, help them get there because it, it, it's hard to get there on your own. Um, so if, if you want to work on that, I'm really thrilled you know, to help you do that. Just let me know. Well, this would be a really awesome topic for our live Q&A. Um, I'd love to have our members have this whole conversation and go back and forth and, and, and share, you know, quite honestly, share um, meals or stories or whatever related to your emotional attachment to food. Um, so with that, that's my pitch to, <laughs> if you join the website, you have access to that Q&A. We, we had one last night for we the first time yep. for um, members. We used to have it exclusively just for the um, How to Feed a Human Masterclass. Master class. So we did add it for members and last night was the first one. So we had some new people and that was fun. 
Um, mm -hmm. But that'd be a great conversation for that and a good way to bounce you know, ideas and concepts. I feel like project. that alone is worth the membership price for oh, the absolutely. website. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, rnrjourney.com is where you can become a member, get access to the masterclass and the community page and mic notes and quotes and a whole bunch of other um, additional information that we provide to members is um, on rnrjourney.com. So definitely join that. It's, it's, um, it's growing, we're adding new things, and it's been a constantly. lot of fun. Constantly, the website is constantly being redone. Yeah, yeah not as redone, I learn more. But upgraded. Upgraded, yeah. yeah. So that, and then our webinar is at howtofeedahuman.com. If you want the masterclass, that's how to get that. Our masterclass is called how to feed a human, doc, uh, how to feed a human masterclass. There right. we go, I can talk. And of course, please do like and share. Let other people know about this. Um, I have been, we've been getting great feedback that people really enjoy this right. and are getting value out of it, so please do like and share. Yes, and remember to tell people that if you're recommending us or you're liking or sharing, that you go to the... Um, notifications. Notifications, wow, I drew a blank there, sorry folks. Go to notifications and select all posts. Because uh, just liking a page or just following a page does not guarantee you'll ever see any information. Yeah, Facebook may or may not share right. our videos with you. So I think that's all I've got. Yeah, and thanks for all the great comments today. That yeah, was awesome. I'll go back and, and uh, respond and engage once we get off, off live yeah, here. We do like seeing that. And so with that, we will say, eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.